be a nice dinner. Why do I enjoy buffalo? Why is that one of my favorite species? Well, it's a beast. It's strength. It walks around with proper intent. People prefer things like lions and leopards and elephants and for one other reason they're all beautiful to me and cute and stuff but I don't know there's something special for me about buffalo. I'm Dr. David Pretorius. I've been a qualified vet since 2009 and in the wildlife industry for the past 15 years, in which time I've built Motsumi Darts and various other companies like Buffalo Analytics, Motsumi Surgical, etc. Great stuff. Hey, how's it? Good, sir. Good, you guys been busy? Keeping busy, yeah. Hmm. It's looking good. How many are you making? I can just push stock. 50. Okay, cool. One of the things which makes South Africa quite unique is the private ownership of wildlife. So therefore I can own a buffalo, I can own a rhino or an elephant. And that gives a unique value to the animals. Buffalo is quite a unique species when it comes to disease control. They are the host for foot and mouth disease. And foot and mouth disease is a very detrimental disease to the economy because of the difficulty in controlling it, the very quick way in which it's spread, jumping to cattle pigs and goats etc. So it is absolutely important that we keep our herds clean and we have the amount of traceability that we need to know where does these buffalo come from, are they a risk to our neighbours and our livestock and if they are in a diseased zone they should stay there, they should not, not be able to move. Is there an Iri camp somewhere? No, that's 4 degrees Celsius. So that's about what's it. Mm. Well, city Fahrenheit, I think. This is minus 30 Fahrenheit. Yeah, minus 30 Fahrenheit, yeah, that's why I got it. <laughs> when we dart buffalo, we use drugs called thiofentanyl, metotomidine and azaprone. Thiofentanyl is one of the strongest morphine-like substances we know and extremely dangerous to humans. So the whole process is a very controlled process under the supervision of a veterinarian. Then what we do is we take these buffalo and we place them into a holding pen where we will draw blood and do the TB skin test. These bloods get sent to the labs where they then test for foot and mouth disease, corridor disease and brucellosis. Based on the results, which will take a week or two, we will then review those results and apply for movement if all the results are then negative. And that is how we basically move buffalo and the purpose of the whole darting. If you take every party concerned, let's call it nature conservation, state veterinary services, private veterinarians, helicopters, truck operators, etc. It's roughly about 14 to 20 different parties involved that needs to be organized over time. So paperwork is the, the biggest administrative burden on buffalo. They are the most highly regulated animal species in South Africa. And to move a buffalo, we have to adhere to all these strict protocols. Darting buffalo is a, both a science and art. One should know the drugs, how the drugs work, how they interact, what receptors they bind on and the effect you expect to see. But then the art part of it is to decide when to dart, what you estimate the animal's behavior will be. And because it is not just a textbook thing, it, it does take time to acquire the skill and the experience. Hopefully we will see the benefit that the livelihood of people are 
enhanced. At the end of the day, all the disease control, all the testing, all the management practices and things, becoming more efficient allows people to make a better living and people being able to take care of their families and their children and their children's children. And I think that is the long-term vision. I mean, look how nice it is. It's very stable today. Everything. If we are confident that we can move our animals efficiently, then we can farm effectively. If we don't take care of those things, it will eventually just erode and people will, will abandon the conservation and the keeping of these species.